A true dichotomy does exist. Yes, in fact, it does. If there is no God, if we are alone here in the universe, nobody put us here, and you have a powerful, powerful sense of personal destiny that is irreconcilable. Those two cannot be. They cannot be. If you, if you are an atheist and you have had in your life some strong sense of personal destiny, guess what? That requires a, a, a purposed existence. That requires a God. That requires a creator. If we are alone here in the universe and nobody fashioned us to be here, then there is no way you could have any sort of personal destiny. Any burning sense you have that you were supposed to do this to set the world on fire, that is an illusion. That is an illusion. So, think about yourself right now, right where you stand. If you have some sort of burning sense inside of you that I was, I'm here to do this, can't be an atheist. Doesn't work. Now there's some confusion over the random occurrence versus design. Um, it's part of the problem is, is you need to actually go dig deep into your own belief system and understand what your beliefs actually mean as they played out in, play out in the real world. What am I talking about? For example, in a lecture with... Uh, Jordan Peterson the other day I was, I was watching on YouTube. Actually, I believe it was Rationality Rules was analyzing it for a different reason than, than what, what I grabbed from it. But what I grabbed from it, he defines religion as this. The hidden axiomatic system you operate under is essentially your religion. Now that's a very broad and vague definition of religion, but that's actually an important idea to consider. The hidden axiomatic system that you operate under, the beliefs there very deep within you that cause you to act. What are they? Most people don't even know what they are. They operate out in the world and they say, I'm X. Even Christians, even Christians, that's why you find atheists turn, Christians turn atheists. They go from 18-year-old Mr. I'm, a, I'm a on fire Christian to Mr. 23-year-old, you know, I hate God. I'm an atheist. No, I hate God. I, I, we don't hate God. We don't believe he exists. Fine. You don't believe he exists. Whatever. They go to Mr. To Mr. Atheist, 23-year-old Mr. Atheist. Why? Because they never examined the hidden, uh, the axiomatic system that was undergirding them when they were 18 years old. A lot of people do that, grow out of their beliefs. Because they didn't really look deep at, at what's actually motivating their actions. Even you, the atheist. You know, what, if you actually look deep at the axiomatic system that is causing you to act, that is informing your belief system enough to inspire action. Let's take it one step further than Peterson laid it out. That is a religion. And I'm not trying to argue a semantic definition. I'm trying to go somewhere with that particular definition because that is very helpful to understanding you, yourself, and why you do things. What motivates you to act in the world? What hidden belief systems? Have you ever taken your actual beliefs out and examined them? One of the reasons why I'm a lot different than a lot of other Christians I meet is because I actually believe my beliefs. <laughs> they don't. Or they, they, that's why they're so, they, ironically, that's why they can be so fervent and dogmatic on the surface. Because they're defensive underneath the surface. They don't really know God is real. They kind of sort of think God is real. They don't really know. They don't talk about, they don't, they're, not, they're not a Christian the same way I'm a Christian. They don't have faith the same way I'm a faith. My faith is overpowering and all-consuming to one degree. It is extraordinarily strong, cannot be shaken, cannot be taken from me from an external source, period. And probably not from internal either. Much stronger than most people I know. Unshakable to a certain degree. But most of those other Christians are different. In, that's why they're so defensive. That's why they're dogmatic. That's why they're rigid. Because they don't actually believe their beliefs. And you sort of sense that when you're debating them or when you get close to them. 
They don't actually believe it deep down inside. That's why they're afraid to be challenged on the subject. You know, I'm not afraid to be challenged on any subject. I can be wrong about any subject under the sun. It doesn't make any difference to me. And yeah, I'm sort of rambling. I got off on a side point. Uh, the, the, but the rambling is useful. You know, roll with it. I'm so uptight, man, so I'm rambling a little. <laughs> it's useful rambling. Especially for you, the atheist. Take your beliefs out into the light of day and actually examine them in the cold light of day. Do they really hold up to the scrutiny and the skepticism that you pretend that they do? Because I don't think so. I don't think they do. I listen to the hardest core atheists out there. Hardest. The, the, the most atheist of the atheists. The ones that are flying the flag the hardest and, you know kicking ass and taking names, the Matt Dillahunties and such. And I went through all the talking points in the last two or three years, and I went to, and unlike most of you atheists, I go to the, to the most challenging and the most convincing and the toughest to counter. I don't go to the, you know, most of you go to the, the Noah's Ark Christians. Why? Because you can beat them in an argument. Easy. The Noah's Ark Christians. Guys who say, you know, the Bible is a great science book and then haven't read the Bible. Those guys are easy to beat in an argument, that's why you go to them. But that's not actually challenging the foundations of your own belief system. Do you honest to God believe your beliefs? Pfft. Huh? Do you even really honest to God examine your beliefs? That's a much more useful question than just whether you and I have like a debate. That's a useful question for you the individual no matter what. That is something you should actually be delving deep into. Anyways, that's all for now.